Okay. Oh. We got it? Yeah, you got it. You got it. I'm... Good, good, good. For, first of all, I have to, before we even get started, like, what is in your youth juice? Because you still look beautiful. <laughs> what You still look beautiful now as you did then. It's like you have not changed a bit. Like, what is the oh secret? Oh, my God. I wish that was true. Thank you for saying that. But um, <laughs> you know what? I'll tell you the truth. I um, th thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I, but you know, it's funny because you go back and look at all those old things and go, yeah, no, mm, it's not quite the same. <laughs> it's not quite the same. Like, you you be same. fooling me. You would be fooling me. <laughs> thank you. You know what? I've got some good genes. Though. I've got really good genes. My um, my grandmother. I was one of the youngest of uh, uh, 21 grandchildren. Okay. My grandmother lived to be almost 103. Wow. And the last time that I, yeah, yeah, it's a blessing. And the last time that I saw her was about, I don't know, about four or five months before she passed away. And I just remember looking at her and I was like, Oh wow, she doesn't have a lot of wrinkles. That's good to know. <laughs> so it's a good thing that she's passed that on to you because give it another yeah. 10, 20 years, you're still not going to change any bit. Anytime soon. Yeah. So you got good genes. Uh, is it also like, you know, is it health as well? Like, are you on like, you know, good diets and stuff like that? Like, are you on like healthy things? I try. Yeah. I, um, I, I cook a lot of like a lot of what I eat. And, um, but so I do, you know, I'm more into pro I, I try to limit carbohydrates. Okay. I just gave up bread, which is that's, that's my passion. I, wow. I, I love, I love breads, but I haven't had bread now. Or, or much bread for about two months now. So, and you can really tell the difference because, you know, I was, I was carrying a little extra winter, winter weight, we'll say, you know, okay. so I gave up the, but, you know, give up the, you know, get rid of the carbs, get rid of the bread, especially, but, you know, heavier on proteins and lots of good, healthy green veggies and fruit and that, and, you know, yeah. It must've been difficult when you, when you said to yourself, oh, I've got to give you up. It was, was there like a yes. moment where you thought like, this is, oh, it, my relationship with bread is <laughs> over. Yes. Yes. I, you know, I love um, just any, any kind of bread, but I, lo I love Italian food, especially oh, wow. too. So, you know, pasta and all of that amazing. Oh. I'm, a, I'm a pasta dude. <laughs> I'm a pasta dude. I love pasta. Like anything, yeah. anything I can make. I'm not the best chef in the world. Let's be honest. But if we're talking like a dish that my mom's always taught me, if you don't have enough food, just make something out of nothing. And the main thing is always yeah. seasoning that's true yeah that's true yeah that's are you true. are you yeah. are you very much a seasoning person like did you grow up with like lots of like hot food in the house always yeah I um I grew up in the southern part of the United States and for anybody who doesn't know that they like to uh <laughs> they like to cook in the south um but there's a lot of fried food but my mom was was not so much into the fried thank you but yeah but you know just seasoning like I, I don't use a lot of salt for example but I love garlic 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 rosemary um i've really gotten it my my brother has gotten me into um what's it called turmeric turmeric oh, wow. it's an yeah it's i mean i know it's supposed to be good for you yeah. uh, that's what the aging thing too so okay, whenever you're you know whenever you need that somewhere down the line turmeric is supposed so, to be really so that's good supposed to be part of a magic potion to have like that's part of the magic your... potion turmeric yeah <laughs> I mean, we've got but some turmeric in the house, though. So, yeah, it, I guess it does make sense to, you know, with the yeah. whole non-aging process, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you got to do it. You got to do it. You so, um, turmeric, and what's my other favorite? Rosemary. Um, oh, um, cilantro. Cilantro. What is that? It's, you know what? I don't know. It's, it's, it's an herb, but, you know, I, it's good and it's um, good with, um, like, I love to make um, barbecue chicken pizza. Oh, my there God. There I go with wow. it. Yeah, barbecue chicken pizza with some red onion, oh. um, and and uh, put a little. Um, well, I like um, I like goat cheese on it too. But then put a little cilantro on it. Mm. Oh man, could you please send so me some good. samples because you're making me hungry. Honestly, <laughs> the way the, I mean the, the fact that you're a host as well, like you know, you just present it so well. Like you, you know, it's like you're doing an advertisement already without actually realizing you're doing it. <laughs> that's funny that is crazy. i never thought about it. maybe i have a cooking show next that'll be my next thing right oh <laughs> uh, well yeah put that on your list of like other achievements that you're gonna make um there you go i yeah. mean what an honor it is to have you on um you know i grew up watching you in a lot of shows um you know and when i got when i was told i would have the chance to talk to you and you said you'd be up for it my my heart pounded i was really excited i felt like a kid again um so what you know thank you for so much for taking the time to do this i really appreciate it 
Of course. Well, thank you for asking me. That was really, you know, that's that's an it's an honor to talk to you too. Oh uh, well, pleasure, pleasure's all mine. <laughs> uh, I mean, how I came across it, and I thought, like, let me see if I can get a hold of you. Was I was watching in the house. Um, mm-hmm. and you appeared on that episode where the character Marion LL Cool J is going through like a, a a spiritual awakening and having to set up his pyramids so that he's spiritually like set. Um, and then like, you know, his coach, coach brings in models, you come in and then literally towards the end of his struggles, you came, you go straight up to him and try and speed up the process. And it's like, Ooh, I like a bit of Marion. <laughs> let me, let me go up to him and then see what I could do. And and literally, like, I, I, I was thinking in that moment, I was thinking, like, well, if Marion's not going to do it, I'll be more than happy to. If you came up to me, I'd be like, yep, yeah, <laughs> let, let, let's forget the pyramid. I'm all yours. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, that was a fun episode. And that was a really, a really fun sh- show to do. Yeah, that was that was one of my, that's one of my favorite memories, actually. Oh, wow. Brought that. Oh, wow. Well, because, yeah. I mean, we're going to go into, like, your catalog a little bit later on because there's so much we have to unravel because there's not many, many interviews that I've seen on YouTube or, you know, online in general. And, and I feel like, you know, it's my honour to kind of unravel this in terms of your career. Um, so, I mean, firstly, like, obviously, you being a beautiful woman, uh, you've appeared on many different shows. Um, do you get a lot of compliments from people, especially like from, if I'm talking my side of things, when I'm looking at the screen, I'm thinking like, I want a girl like that. She is hot. She is fire. Like, do you get like a lot of compliments, like even still to this day, or is it a thing like you appear on these shows and you're just happy to be there? Well, you know, I'm, I, that's a hard question to answer. Um, I mean, yeah, I get compliments. You know where it's funny though, because I, I get more, um, I think I get more compliments when I'm just going to pump gas than any, you know, because I'm typically I'm I'm there. I'm with my, you know, my sweats and my baseball cap. I swear men are more, um, uh, I, I don't know, they, they, they just come, hey, how you doing? You know, like, oh, wow. <laughs> but um, no, it is it's it's very flattering to, to still get put into that category. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still really lucky in that while I, since I've gotten older, I, I get to play lawyers and doctors and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I also still get called for like the, the, the glam type characters. So that's kind of nice, you know? Yeah. Because, <laughs> so- because I feel like, you know, me growing up watching you, like a lot of people that grew up in the nineties watching you on screen. And um, I feel like, you know, the view of uh, beautiful black women from like the 90s, the 80s, the early 2000s, I feel like it's totally different now to how we appreciate women in like our current times in 2022. Because, you know, the likes of you, like Halle Berry, uh, Robin Givens, uh, Nia Long as like examples of, you didn't have to do too much. You can you can turn yeah. up in a long black coat and people will still appreciate your beauty. Where I feel like it's like now we have to show a lot more skin. We have to twerk a lot more. We have to, you know, there's a lot of influencers that feel that they need to do that, especially with the idea of Instagram and OnlyFans. Would you say, Mm -hmm. would you think that the idea of beauty has changed from the time that, you know, you were around doing these like shows to now in 2022? I do think you're right. Um, You're absolutely right. It's it's been funny. I was having that conversation with someone the other day. I'm glad that I kind of came up in, in the time that I did because there was, um, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in sort of leaving a little bit to mystery. Right. So in other words, you know, there, and, and I, I'll tell you just one of my, as an example, one of my favorite shows on TV right now is Bridgerton. And what I, that's a great example, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Um, have you have you seen this current season? I, well, I, mean, I, but last season. I was actually invited to watch the uh, season two episode one screening uh, literally just last week. Uh, before, well, actually, it was a little while ago before uh, it got released. So I did get a brief idea of the idea of beauty with these women that you know, and obviously expanding with not just like race, culture, and things like that. So I did get an idea that the idea of beauty then would be totally different to our modern times. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But what what I liked about it is that you know, you, there it's a really sexy show. It's a, re- I mean, it's it's hot. It's, I mean, it's just fun to watch. But <laughs> but there's not a lot. But but the but the sex. But it's not you know sex like we have it today. You know what I mean? It's like it's just more sort of the. Um, 
It's more the central. Hints of life. It's more central. That's the word. Yeah, it's yeah. more central. And so these days, I don't know. I think um, a lot of stuff is not left. There's no ima- There's nothing left to imagine. So uh, I'm I'm glad that you know I got to um, come at a, come up at a time that I did in television where you know it was more kind of glam and cute that kind of stuff as opposed to like you said. Thank goodness I don't have to twerk because I can't dance. So. Yeah. Oh really? Oh really? <laughs> I, can, I I was just thinking like all the shows I watch, like you know, a beautiful woman on screen that has like that sass about her and a lot of a lot of the shows. But I I would have thought like you know yeah maybe undercover you don't show it much but I would have thought like maybe the odd little dancer here and there that would be reminiscent to the idea of twerking now but it wasn't like that before because the only person I can remember um I think it was in the show Martin where Tisha Campbell did a little twerk Mm -hmm. then but that time it wasn't considered twerking it was just a dance where it was just she was just messing around but actually right. people take the idea of twerking very seriously especially like if i'm in the clubs oh. now and i see all these girls that are bare twerking i'm just like i don't know i, I don't know what i don't know what to say or do or look like <laughs> I, I don't know like i mean you know <laughs> from your side of things like obviously like things have changed like how have you been able to like adapt to like current times knowing that you know a lot of people have watched you from like the the 90s 2000s and then you're still continuing your career how do you feel about the world changing now and having you to adapt to all of it? Well, you know what? Um, they say with um, wardrobe, okay, like if you're putting together a wardrobe, for women anyway, yeah, uh, you have certain classic pieces, you know, like certain things that are going to last. Whether, you know, you can buy it now and in 20 years, it'll still be in style. So right. I think classic. I think class is in style, mm. no matter when, you know, I mean, there's always going to be a place for classic beauty. A cl- I'm not, not necessarily speaking about myself, but classic, you know, um, a, a woman who's classy, a woman who presents herself a certain way. And, you know, you may not be cast for in, in LA, you may not be cast for one role, but there's always going to be that other role available. Mm. So, you know, and I've been, um, I think one of the reasons I've been able to stay active in the business as long as I have is because I've stuck with it. Mm. A lot of people go, okay, I'm okay. I'm over this. I'm done. You know, because, you know, auditioning, I'm, I'm in my studio in North Carolina right now. Um, but you know, it's put doing auditions and and all that. It it can get very tiring, (laughs) but, Uh, and you've probably um, gone through a lot of auditions. I've gone for a lot of auditions. Yeah. But uh, there's a quote, I forget exactly how it goes, but you know, it's not necessarily the most talented person that will, you know, always that will get the job, but it's often the person that just sticks with it. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta put the work in, put the work, the time in. Um, I've got some, some people, other actresses that were around at the time I was getting started in LA who are now, you know, really starting to come into their own, um, there's a show called The Kings of Napa. Devika Parikh is one of the stars. She and I kind of got started in the business about the same time. And the beautiful thing about uh, being around the song is that you see your, your um, peers also succeeding mm-hmm. and it just feels good. You know, yeah. it feels good. Like, all right, if it couldn't be me, I'm so glad it's you, you know, because they put the time, the effort, the energy the studying that all of that in too so well i mean speak speaking of like putting the time in i mean let's take it back from the beginning because again there's not (laughs) much on you that we can work to in terms of you know if we see you online so um obviously you mentioned that uh you're were you born in charlotte north carolina I was. You was. Okay, so, because it, it said in the bio that you were a native, um, so I wasn't sure if you were born in a different part of the States and then moved over, but you were always born in Charlotte. Born in Charlotte. You're born yeah. in Charlotte. Okay, cool. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, you did a lot of, like, ballet, you were doing piano and flute uh, these times as well, and obviously, like, it's still part of the arts, um, and you've had ap- aspirations to be a model uh, before taking on Hollywood. So talk to me about what it was like growing up in in Charlotte, what the scene was like over there, like the art scene and the, the acting scene and what made you wanted to become a model first off? Um, well, I, I started out in, like you said, in, in music. I took a little ballet. My mother wanted me to be a wear a tutu. I don't know. So <laughs> so I did, I did the ballet thing um, and I really got into music and found that was a really... Um, uh, a way that I was really comfortable in expressing myself, my creative side. I was really shy growing up. Really, really, really shy. Um, 
I was always fascinated by people who could get up on stage and, you know, sing and dance and, and act and all that. But I would have never, ever have done it. I was way too shy to, to wow. ever. Uh, but with an instrument, I felt like it wasn't so much me. It was, you know, it was, it was the, it was the instrument. It wasn't me. So, um, so I did that. And then, um, the modeling thing just happened because someone came to my school and, um, so she was a, she had a, a uh, was opening a modeling school and asked me if I would be interested in all that. And I was just flattered. I, you know, I never, I was, I was a nerd. I was a geek. I was really, really into the book, really into the books. Um, I was a, you know, a good student. My parents were both teachers. So, you know, um, so, I mean, besides, I just, so sorry to cut you. So besides music, like you being, you know, you say you were a nerd, like were there other things you were into <laughs> in during school days that, that considered you to yourself to being a nerd? Oh yeah. I mean, I was really good in math and science. Like, okay. so, so good, so good that I got a full scholarship to the, um, to North Carolina state university for engineering. Oh, I was wow. going to be an engineer. Yeah. It was, it was like that. Uh, but, <laughs> but I decided, you know, when it was time to graduate, I said, like, you know, I don't think I want to do this for the rest of my life. And I just had, I guess I just had something inside me. I, I was always fascinated with television. Mm. Um, I thought I wanted to be a television reporter. And mm. so I ended up going to college for, um, for journalism and um, television and film. So I, I thought behind the, behind the scenes, and then maybe I would get to do reporting, that kind of thing. So, but mm. um, the acting thing didn't happen really. It, it was kind of by, it was completely by accident that I ended up being an actress. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, if we take it back to what you were just saying about, um, you know, someone came to your school, uh, you know, they started off a modeling agency. So what were those conversations like before you got into modeling? Well, she, you know, she had these classes and she says, well, you know, we can teach, I can teach, we can teach you how to do runway and do, and, and, you know, take pictures and all that. I don't know. It was just, I, I was, I think I was 13 or so. And when you're 13, you know, I, especially for girls, you're, it's such an awkward time and you're, it's just very flattering when someone even thinks you could be a model. Wow. Um, during the, at about that time was when, uh, Oh, wow. Brooke Shields was really popular as a model right then. And I was just so, I just thought she was the most beautiful thing in the world. I just thought oh, if I could be like Brooke Shields, you know, or whoever. So I, <laughs> so I was really flattered. Yeah. Um, but uh, my, my mom was always really um, very supportive. And she, anything that I said I wanted to do, she was supporting me in it, my dad too, but especially my mom. And uh, so, yeah, we took the classes and it's, you know, it was just another a good way to sort of start getting me out of my little sheltered cocoon, whatever, you know, mm. so, so it's just a step. I, I was, I was going to ask that your parents, you just said that were very supportive of your decisions. Were, was there any reservations at all knowing that, you know, knowing how hardcore the industry can be sometimes, especially Hollywood modeling, you know, all the stories that have been said before, were there any reservations on your parents' part or were they just like all the way support you regardless? Well, I think they were supportive of me up to a point. If it sort of stayed local, if I could do little local things, maybe little local commercials, that sort of thing. But when I wanted to move to New York um, after I graduated, my my father said no. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I, he, he, no, it was a, it was a definite no. Yeah. Um, and so I, I ended up moving to, I went to school in Washington, D.C. instead because I had godparents that lived there. So they felt like there was somebody to watch over me. Right. But um, yeah, they were pretty, they were pretty protective, really right. protective, actually. But then what got to the point of like for you to say like, I'm going to like, I know there's reservations from my dad, from my dad's side, especially that like you just said. But, you know, mm -hmm. what got what got you that edge to go like, I'm still going to push for it regardless like you know I'm not gonna anyone stop me was that was there like a revelation that you had on your part no I'm just I'm just really stubborn I'm very stubborn and I know what I want I did what um what they wanted me to do which was they wanted me to graduate from college right so I did graduate from college and I tried um having a a real job for about a year um I worked as a television reporter yeah. Um, for a local station. And I just, I found that it just wasn't for me. It was depressing. It was, wow. you know, it was local, local news. And so every day it's, you know, a fire, a flood and somebody got shot, that kind of stuff. So mm. it's, um, you know, it was depressing. So, um, 
about that time, this is another, this is the truth of how I ended up in Hollywood. Um, about that time, I was engaged to somebody. He broke up with me. He was cheating on me and he announced this to me. <laughs> And, how, um, how how did that I come said, about? Was it like a letter, or was, was it how how <laughs> I can't fathom that. Well, um, he was um, he was in medical school at the time and um, doing uh, what's called a rotation, a medical rotation uh, in another state. And he called me one night around midnight and just sort of said, "I don't think we should be engaged anymore." And it was about a six-hour conversation. And I found out he had been seeing someone and, you know, the whole thing. And I was just devastated. It was, I mean, I was, it was really sort of the first time in my life that I, well, it was definitely my big, my first big heartbreak and all that. But the first time I had really, my, something I had planned in my life hadn't gone the way I thought it was going to go. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, after being depressed for, you know, a little while, I just decided the best thing for me was to just go somewhere where I didn't know anybody. I didn't know it. I knew nothing, basically nothing about the place. I didn't have a job. Um, I, I had no real plan. So I just picked up and I moved to San Francisco, mm. I moved to San Francisco just cause I had been there once before for about two weeks and I liked it. Okay. And I got a job teaching modeling so I went back to my modeling roots mm. teaching guys how to do runway guys how to do uh, you know, male models to run runway and um how to do like commercial acting that kind of stuff because I had taken one class in college and they said okay you can teach <laughs> so, wow. but here's the good part a scout came from LA to sort of scout our the school and he ended up talking to me and he said, you know, you have a really good look. Have you ever acted? And I said, no, he had me read something with him. He thought he could represent me. He convinced me to come down there for an audition. And here's the truth. I, I booked the very first thing I ever auditioned for in my life in LA. Wow. So, wow. you know, and I, uh, I worked for two hours. It was on a show called, um, uh, out all night. And it was, it, was this the pilot? Bef was this like the pilot before your first major appearance, which was the Fresh Prince? If I'm correct. Nope. First appear. Well, that uh, that was probably my first major appearance was Fresh right. Prince, like you said. This Out All Night was um, before that. I forget how many months before that, but it was a sh an actual show. It starred Vivica Fox, Patti LaBelle, Morris Chestnut, um, and uh, anyway. But yeah. So, but I I, I had two lines two lines. I worked for two hours and I made 1800 us dollars. To say and I just large remember, enough. yeah. And I remember thinking, wow, okay, well, if it's this is easy, easy. Yes. <laughs> I'll do this. I'll yeah. try this. I mean, it's paying and, me more uh, than like all the teaching that I'm doing right now. So why not? Yeah, I wasn't making that in a month. I don't think <laughs> so. Yeah. So I just, um, I, I, I was really lucky, really blessed, but I, you know, that I, that's, I'm also really stubborn and, you know, I, I'll, I'm a big, and if somebody puts something in front of me, I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll try that. Sure. Why not? That sounds like a Taurus move. True. I does it. I'm a, I'm a Capricorn. So I'm usually, you know, what are they slow and steady? Is that God, God, God bless you because I'm one too. Are, okay. See. Wait, are you, Dece are you December or January? I'm January. Okay. I'm, I'm Christmas day. Oh wow! Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. I'm January twelfth. January twelfth. Okay, cool. Th yeah. th I guess this is an exclusive then because uh, it's <laughs> it's been reported that there's not been many occasions that you haven't really just said like your birthday and stuff. So I feel like as a fellow Capricorn to another, I feel absolutely blessed to know this information. So yeah, yeah. I won't tell you the year, but I'll tell you the day. I <laughs> <laughs> They always say about never ask a lady their age, you know, but that's obviously, right. like you said, you yeah, got the age, right. you got the youth juice. So you're continuing that. So we'll still call you as your, your, your early twenties and stuff. So we'll, we'll say your early twenties. Yeah. You but, know, I like you. I'm liking you more and more. There you go. <laughs> God bless. See, I, you know what? The, 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 the other feeling that I had was when I talked to Robert Richard, um, some time ago and you know, that was another dude that I highly respect as well in the acting game. Um, and another Capricorn as well. So it's just like, I just feel, oh. I just feel like we're just, we're just killing this shit totally. You That's know what it. I mean? 
I love it. I love it. Um, so, I mean, you know, you were mentioning about like, you know, your 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 first gigs uh, before you got to uh, Fresh Prince. But I wanted to talk about briefly like your um, being in, involved in Miss America and the Miss USA pageants. Um, was this after university? And how did you get involved with those pageants? Um, it was during college and um, it was just another way, honestly, to make money for school. I, I really worked my way through school. So and right. um, with those pageants, you know, especially the well, both of them, but um, especially the Miss America pageant, it's considered what's called a scholarship pageant. So they're really big on giving um, scholarships for for those that place and whatnot. And somehow I was always fortunate enough to at least get, you know, for you know a runner-up i was always a runner-up um mm. even if i didn't win so that was so that was you always... runner-up you should have won that shit <laughs> i finally won when i finally won i was like okay i'm good i'm done and i moved on but um but yeah i competed i competed for seven years before i won i was wow i was first runner-up yeah five years in a row <laughs> that's another story but wow well, well was yeah. it was it just politics but every it, it actually was politics, oh, okay. so enough, I'm not just enough. saying. Like, I found out later, yeah, it was politics. Fair but, enough, um, fair enough. But I got money. I got money for, and you know, and more time, and I got to be on the stage. So that's how I was again, you know, getting. It was, it was, it was really a good. What do you call it? Good training, whatever mm. training ground for for the for the. L, for the LA market. So it's like, it's funny because people often ask me, you know, it must be hard, the rejection of auditioning for things and then you don't get it and that mm. kind of stuff. And I say, you know, it's really not such a big deal for me because auditions, if you're lucky, you may have 24 hours, maybe 48 hours to prepare for an audition, mm. regardless of how big the part is. Um, but with, and, and so, you know, you prepare for those 24 hours, then you put it on tape and send it off. You're like, okay, and you cross your fingers. But with this, these pageants, you have you prepare for those for a year, and you're working out, and you're on, and you're dieting, and you're reading up on your current events, and you're practicing your talent, and you're doing all that stuff, and then to come in first runner up five years in a row, that's not cool. What what a, <laughs> what a disgrace! Like I mean, I mean, she's left a legacy. She you see it on TV screens. Like what 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 what's your problem, you people? Know, come on, you know. You know. <laughs> But that's okay. That's okay because I, you know, was just preparing me for something better. Yeah, I was. I was actually going to ask, like, you know, obviously with the pa uh, pageant stuff and the modelling, uh, that must have heavily prepared you for, you know, getting into the Hollywood scene and being involved with like a lot of TV shows, acting. Uh, I guess it must have prepared you for all of that. Yeah, because it's, it was really competitive, and mm. you know, acting is is very competitive too. Mm. It definitely is. So. I mean. That, I mean, of course, like you landed like your first major, like we were just talking about, like the Fresh Prince. Uh, I mean, I that was my childhood. That was literally the definition of my childhood. Um, you know, firstly, like for you, like, you know, we're going to like the Fresh Prince, you know, I mean, it, st it stood the test of time 30 years later. We're still watching it to this day. Right. I mean, did you did you firstly think that when you appeared on the show that it would leave as much a legacy as it did? And I mean, talk to me also about the process of you being involved with the show. Like, yeah, talk to me about that. Um, uh, to answer your first question, no, I didn't. I mean, it's and it's always really interesting. You, you never know what's going to hit. And I did know um, or I did realize how talented Will Smith was. I mean, I just he was just just a naturally funny, naturally talented guy. So mm -hmm. it doesn't surprise me that it's, it's, you know, stood the test of time, but you know, did I think about it? Not, not really. I thought, Oh, this is, you know, this is great. This is fun. Um, the process is just, you know, I, that manager that got me to move down from move from San Francisco to LA. Um, I submit you for these jobs. And I think I had read for the show at least three or four times before. Mm. Yeah. Before I finally booked it. And I remember talking to the, uh, the casting director, Lisa Katz. And I said, you know, um, I, I said, I can't believe it. I finally, I you know, finally booked it. And she says, Oh, I knew you would book it. It's just a matter of time. It's just the finding the right role. Mm. And that's, again, that's what I tell a lot of younger actors that, you know, ask me about it. It's like, yeah, you know, you just, you just, you just have to be confident in knowing that, your time's coming. If you, you just, again, you got to stick with it and it's coming, you know, so 
but yeah, but I love still seeing those old shows today. Mm. It's, it's kind of fun. That's what I'm saying. For me, like shows like One on One, uh, My Wife and Kids, Martin, Fresh Prince, of course, like, you know, they define like, you know, legacies of like so like successful shows that still last to this day. Like I was talking about earlier, like, you know, if we go back to the Fresh Prince, like what was it like to be in that scene with Will Smith and, you know, how were the cast and crew and and how how was that experience? What, what did you learn from being on a first major set for you that pre that prepared you for like other roles that you would take later on? Well, the thing about it is with them um, that, well, that was as, as, you know, it's a sitcom mm. and with sitcoms, it's the timing. There is an actual, and since I didn't really study acting that much, I, I worked with an acting coach um, before the audition and before I actually did the job. So there's, there's, there's called beats for, 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 for laughs, basically. It's, it's um, usually straight line, straight line, joke line, basically that kind of thing. Mm. And there's, there's a way to deliver a line. It's not like, you know, a lot of people think, Oh, it's not, you know, it's just easy. It's really not. Mm. Um, but the, the, the crew was fantastic. The cat, the cast was wonderful. Um, you know, I, I, I just feel so blessed to have gotten to work with Will and, and, and really all of the cast members that there was, you know, it was a fun set um, and not all sets are fun, but mm -hmm. they were really at, by that point, they really were like a family. They all seemed to get along really well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was a great experience. And, you know, I remember in that episode, Will is um, he's, he's, you know, coming in to kiss me. But um, he keeps, I keep material, you know, yeah, transforming. Yeah, see me, me near, near Lisa. Long and Lisa, yeah, see her face, yeah. yeah. So, you know, he says, oh, we didn't like plan the whole thing where he throws me off the, um, throws me off the couch, for example. He says, get the, you know, I'm like, okay. Oh, was that an ad lib? So yeah, it was kind of an ad lib. So wow. it was, you know, <laughs> you got to roll with the stuff. Right. And it's, it's fun, you know, but you just have to be open to having fun. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, like, I'm, you know, I'm glad that you had, uh, you know, a really great experience with Will. Um, I mean, I mean, of course, like, you know, I, I have to ask, like, you know, because obviously the past week, it's undeniable what's happened. Um, you yeah. know, you must have seen it yourself. I mean, it must feel weird knowing what, you know, obviously we're, we're talking about the Oscars and what happened with Will going on stage and slapping Chris. There's been a lot of debate into whether it was real or not. But regardless of that, knowing your history, knowing that you had a really good, great time on set with Will, when when the first, when the story first came out, like what was your initial feeling when you saw that? Because for me, that I was I was very confused. It was very confusing. Um, yeah, I didn't. I, I watched it. On, I saw it live and all that. And. Um, I, I kind of, I was reading lips. I'm like, oh my, oh, oh, oh my gosh. And I, cause I missed what Chris said to right. start off with. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously I, I'm, you know, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a believer in violence. Let's sure. start off with that. 100%. Um, but in my experience with Will Smith, you know, he has never been anything and I've never seen him be anything, but um, kind, considerate, really giving, um, you know, I, that was that, even though it was a big part for me, it wasn't a huge part that I had on Fresh Prince, you know, compared to some others. Sure. Um, but even years afterwards, when I would run into me, Hey girl, how you doing? Yeah. He's, you know, just, just somebody who's, um, very down to earth. Mm. Um, and, and so it was, it was shocking. It was mm. completely shocking. And um, I just knew without having known what Chris said beforehand, I said, oh man, he had to have been provoked. That, I mean, and, and now that I do know, you know, I, I think we all, um, we all do things that maybe we might regret later. I mean, nobody's perfect. Nobody, nobody is perfect. Maybe you know, it, 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 was probably not the best move <laughs> to do that at the Oscars and all that. But, mm -hmm. um, but by the same token, what it seemed to me, is like, you know, this is, this is a man who's protecting his woman, his, his wife, who's, who's standing up for her, mm -hmm. um, which I gotta say, I, I applaud, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, I applaud that, um, that, that shows, you know, there, there's something between them and, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's not just, you know, maybe it's not just a Hollywood story, a Hollywood type marriage, you know, where you're just reading it, 
who, who knows, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry it happened. I hope they work it out and, and all that. Um, it was, crazy, you know, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it because was really crazy. I mean, the, the only thing I'll, I'll speak on about it before we move on is that, um, the, when I watched it myself, like, uh, of course, initially, like when the joke landed, like he was laughing at first and, and we all know the story of what happened in terms of like, you know, yeah. JD's experiences with alopecia and stuff like that. Um, the time between him landing the joke when Will was laughing and then, you know, Jada was looked like she was a bit disappointed to the time mm. but in between times of not seeing their direct reaction for Will to go up and then slap Chris Rock. It that's what the only confusing element is. I think no one really know about that, I guess. But the only thing I would say is like, I respect Will as an actor. I respect Will as a human being. I also respect Chris Rock, uh, especially for holding it down um you know afterwards and Good still point. continuing to uh you know obviously he's still doing his comedy tour like his 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 sell out like for the tours have been selling out like ever since that um so i don't know it's a weird thing because even when we yeah. talk about things like covid and the war like that's going on i'm, I'm not going to go into t- too deep into that but we seem to be in this generation now where they, we're speculating on everything on absolutely everything so but all I can say is, is that I hope, you know, I hope Will goes okay. I will, I hope everyone does okay off the back of this. And yeah. that, it, you know, emotions might have driven him. But again, that's just my thought on it. So, I mean, I guess for you, it's just like uh, you're saying the same thing. I hope everyone does well in this instance. Yeah, I, I do, you know, because they're they're both um, they're they're both, you know, obviously, obviously public figures, figures, both role models, people who, you know, people look look to um, people on TV and to, mm-hmm. to serve as role models. And so, you know, it's 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 bigger than just the two of them. And I'm sure that they both realize that, especially at this point, after it's been all over social media and everything else. So. Yeah, because the fact that it's still okay. going on, like it is still being talked yeah. about now, like there's still new videos about it. But you know yeah. the the one thing i'll take away from this is like from your side of things like you know having worked with will that it was only a positive experience you were mentioning that you know in general that it's a nice guy and all that sort of stuff so i think i guess emotions just built up on on, on that moment but i mean let, yeah. let, let's let's talk about like you know i mean your imdb list is nuts like your your credit <laughs> listing is nuts like you've appeared in so many shows so i'll list out some of them so you, malcolm and eddie weighing brothers Jamie Foxx Show, In the House, The Parkers, One on One, NYPD Blue, Ali Bibbill, Black Scorpion, The Game, The Sopranos, Nutty Professor 2, as a, as a big movie role, The Price is Right, and obviously your new TV series, Long Slow XL, which we'll talk about as well. I mean, Jesus, I'm thinking like, you know, you've had so many like like major roles, like you've appeared, you've had a pleasure to, an, an honor to be on these legendary shows. But what I wanted to ask you is that, of course, like we we were kind of discussing it earlier, but like you've appeared as guest appearances on multiple mm-hmm. occasions with multiple shows. Like, you know, for example, you appeared twice on In the House, once on the Jamie Fox show, once on the Steve Harvey show. That was actually a funny moment for me. I will say I love watching the Steve Harvey show. And even when you came in as the weather girl, uh, was it Raina Storm? Was it Raina Storm, your character? Raina yeah. Storm. Oh my gosh, you had to stick out and say, like, oh, we got the broad shoulders here and the buttons here, here, and here. And there's Steve going like this, you know what I mean? Like, like Bill Cosby, like, hey, you know, no one's there. I cracked yeah. up. I was just like, and I still looked at you and I was just like, oh, I wish she, I wish she could do that to me if I was wearing a suit. Uh, <laughs> here, here. Yeah. Yeah. You can mention the earth signs here. The hood here. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm playing around. I'm playing around. But um, I mean, of course, like with your guest appearances being once or twice on each show, like talk to me about why that was. Was it because like, say your agents have said to you that there was another show that we want you to appear in? Uh, was it just, getting constant like work like talk to me about those processes yeah it's just a constant work. i mean okay so what um before sh- you probably know before a show gets on the air there's usually a pilot of some sort and sure. you know and, and you're submitted for all kinds of roles and that kind of thing and what often happens is if you are not fortunate fortunate enough to book um one of the regular roles, series regular roles, you know, maybe the casting director will remember you and like, yeah, but she was really good. So, you know, let's have her come back 
an audition for this guest star. We've done, you know, sometimes all of the scripts are written from, you know, the beginning. Sometimes it's uh, the writers are working on it week to week to week to week, whatever. And so, you know, but they, they remember people that they like. And so you get called in and you audition. And so, um, yeah, but you know, I, I would be very happy, very happy for anybody who's watching to be a nut, to be on a, a series, um, as a regular, again, anytime soon is great. Um, mm. I, um, you know, this, uh, show that I'm working on now, uh, as a recurring long, slow exhale, that's going to be a fantastic show. I think people are really going to love it. And I'm just really you know, thrilled to be a part of that, but, mm. um, yeah, so it's just a matter of just, w again, waiting for the right time, the right project, the right whatever. So, mm. I mean, because obviously, we, you know, we'll go again, we'll talk about uh, Long Slow XL a bit. Um, but of course, like, you know, you've had regular appearances on like, you know, Black Scorpion and uh, Malcolm and Eddie on the fir uh, first series. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, what was I mean, obviously, what was those conversations like for having a re recurring role, like especially with Malcolm and Eddie, where you were like regular on the first season? Um, well, it was, uh, it was, there was a character that was created that I just fit the bill for, I guess, you know, um, and it's, um, you usually go through, um, for, for the series regular, it's not just, just one audition, you, know, you go through the audition and then they call you back and then you read for a different group of people. Usually you read for the casting director first, then you read maybe for the producers. And then if they like you, then you have to read for the, um, uh, the, the, the studio, depending on, you know, what it is. And, um, and you have to be approved by each of these groups of people If the, you know, if the producers like you, but the studio doesn't feel you're right. Then, you know, then there's, then they bring in people, you know, so it's, or maybe there's two, two of you who are for the same thing. So it's just, again, there's a lot of competition for this mm. stuff. Um, and so, um, yeah, as a matter of fact, for the black scorpion, I've read for that, I think about five times, Bef and, and each time they, I was getting notes from the, from the casting people through my manager saying, oh, they said you're too this, you're not enough that, you shouldn't be this, blah, blah, blah. You know, there was always whatever. Mm. And fine, but they kept calling me back. And finally, I was like, well, all right, what am I supposed to And it, it was the same scene. They had me reading the same scene over and over. And I'm like, I don't know what else to do. Wow. What finally, I'll tell you, this is a funny story. What finally got me the job, I think, um, uh, I, one of my best friends was visiting me and she had a dress and I said, I don't even know what to wear. She said, here, why don't you try something for my, for my, um, my suitcase. She had a leopard print dress, tiny, tiny little leopard print dress. I wore that. I ended up booking the series and the character wore nothing but animal prints for all 26 episodes that I did. She was the, my, my character, Veronica was always in some sort of animal print. So you never know. Sometimes it's, <laughs> maybe it's just that. I don't know. Do you know, but it's it... just, you know Yeah. Sorry. Go on. Yeah. No, no, no. That's all. It's, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just a matter of the conversations are always different. It's, it's, uh, you know, you have a lot of people making the final decisions on these things. So. Because it, it. It, um, if I'm correct, when you were on The Fresh Prince for that one episode, didn't you have a little bit of animal print on the side of your dress as well? I did, I did. Animal so print maybe... was big. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it must be like a, a homage to the time that you... Because it, it must feel full circle then when you took on Black Scorpion and you had like, you know, animal print. And then obviously now, like, they must have said like, oh, yeah, she was wearing... She was wearing That's the one. Print. That's the one. We need that. You know? You know what? I I never thought about that, but you know what? Maybe from now on, with all my auditions, I need to wear something. <laughs> yeah. That must be your lucky dress. It must be your lucky that, dress. That must be it. So yeah. you, you need to have like a section in your wardrobe where you have some sort of animal print mm -hmm. to have it reminiscent to the first major gig you got. And if they like you based on that, you're on, it looks like you're onto a further winner. Okay. You know, I think you may have come up with something. Okay, I'm going to do that. And, 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 and if it does work out for you, make sure you credit me, yeah? I will do that. Yeah. I'll, maybe I'll even send you like some percentage. We'll see. You know, we'll talk. We'll talk. About yeah. We'll talk. We'll talk business. So, um, I mean, obviously besides, um, you know, besides acting, like you've, you've taken on like, uh, you know, TV, sh TV game shows as well. Like, uh, the price is right. Uh, back in 2001, uh, as Barker's beauties, um, you even did deal or no deal as well, which was a major show for the UK version on our side of things. Um, I mean, you know, again, like, was it a thing where an opportunity came along as you were doing roles in acting that 
you know, you were called up saying we need like a, a, a model like you or a girl like you to, to come on the show like this. Yeah, absolutely. That's all it is. And, you know, um, again, uh, the more that you're out there, the more that, you know, the more people see you. And so you just keep getting called in. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, I I shouldn't say this because my um, my Instagram following is not huge. I don't have thousands, thousands, but it's kind of like Instagram today. Follow, follow, follow Enya Flack, please (laughs) do it for me, please. Yeah. I I have to get better at posting and stuff. I'm not real good at that. Okay. To get better. But um, but you know how with Instagram now, if you have 10,000, whatever, millions of followers, whatever, um, people pay attention to you, you know, it, it's just the way it is. So with, um, with television, you know, the more you, the more you're on, the more people see you. True. Um, I had a job once when I was asked to do, if I could do sports casting and mm. I, I think I had like a background in journalism and all that stuff. And, but I hadn't really done any sports casting, but I thought I can learn. <laughs> so were you into so sports? I was kind of into sports. Yeah. But not to the point where I could, you know, really, really, really talk, talk the game, but I learned I'm, I'm a, I'm a really fast study. And so I, you know, I learned all the stats, all the, you know, all the different. So, but the great thing about that, I, so I worked for um, doing sports casting for two years in LA, two, three years in LA. The great thing about that was I was always on, on the weekends, you know, like all the games, I was always covering all the different games and whatever. And casting people would watch games and whatever, like everybody else. And they'd see me mm. like, Oh, you know what? Hey, let's call her in for this other part over here. So yeah. it's just, so work, you know, kind of work equals work. So yeah. Yeah. Work equals yeah. work, which yeah. is, which is if we're multiplying it, it's like one times one, two times two, four times four, that formula. So yeah. That looks yeah, like yeah. that happened for you. Uh, and it, I, I've got to ask, Destiny's Child, you got a chance to interview them in their heyday. Uh, yeah. Before Beyonce was how we know Beyonce now. Um, yeah. I mean, you had one of the distinct honours in interviewing them. I mean, what was the event about? And then how did you... Talk to me about Destiny's Child. How, how was that experience? And obviously, did you foresee the fact that Beyonce would be where she is now, knowing you had a chance to talk to her before she blew the way she did? I didn't know she was going to blow up quite that much. I really didn't. But I just knew, wow, these are just like incredibly talented, just incredibly beautiful women. I just remember being stunned at how gorgeous Beyonce was, to be honest with you. But um, that was for the, um, it was the Soul Train Music Awards. And it was like one, I think that was, I think that was their their first Soul Train Award. I think that's right. Um, Mm. But, and I think they got, um, did they get album of the year or, or, or art, new artists or artists of the year? I can't, I'm, I can't I don't remember. remember. But um, yeah, that, that was really great. I mean, being backstage with, and the thing of it is, it's different being around musicians than it is actors. It's like, there's just, just a different energy. It was a lot of fun. 100%. I got to interview Nelly and Shaggy. And there were a lot of people that I was just kind of like starstruck over. Going, but um, yeah, Destiny's Child, that was, that was amazing. Yeah. What, were, what, were, what was it that you guys were talking about? Or was there something that you took away from the conversation with them that you apply to your day-to-day life or were you, again were you just happy to be there at the time i was just happy to be there but i mean i talked to um i remember asking just just really simple questions you know i, I think i asked beyonce you know who some of her inspirations were and she said you know our parents are and our parents you know just very the one the thing about um celebrities we're, we're all everybody they're all we're all people yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, people are people are really much more the same than they are different you know and, mm. and people are it's i think a lot of celebrities even you know really big ones are still um a lot of them are, are still very grounded i mean i've had conversations i've had been you know i've talked with people i've talked to george clooney had a really nice conversation with him i worked at warner brothers for a little while and had a, a fun conversation with him um and but just very very normal stuff so mm-hmm. um what did i learn just again stick with it that's that's something i learned from george clooney you should you should he, put you should put that on your instagram uh bio just stick with it that should be your tagline maybe it should be yeah <laughs> see i'm feeding you all this stuff like you know what i mean it's like it's like revelations even for my part like i'm i've stuck with doing this youtube channel for 10 years so i've stuck with it so there you go and okay there you go. and it's got me to legends like you 
Well, I, I don't know about legends, but thank you. I mean, you're a legend to me because, <laughs> like I said, I grew up watching you. So, like, it, it, again, it's my honor to be chatting to someone of, like, you know, someone that's been hardworking, someone that's, you know, grinded to, you know, get to certain positions. And it just makes me feel like a better man to to keep going. So, you know, I've learned <laughs> anything from conversations I have with people and I take away gems and I apply it to day-to-day -day life. It's only meaningful to me. And so far, like, you've given me the most gems so far. <laughs> so I'll be honest. Wow. Well, the thing is, if you love what you do, it's not work. I mean, I, I, I love acting. I mean, yeah. I, I truly enjoy it. Um, since I, 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 you know, I have an apartment in LA, but I, I have a home in North Carolina and I, you know, just my, my mom is here getting older and all that sort of thing. So it's just a, it's good for me to be here a certain amount of time. Plus there's so much, um, to do here on the East coast as well now. Mm. Um, but I just, I just, uh, one of the things that I love is I get to work with younger actors or less experienced actors. And, um, you know, I tell them, if you don't like what you're doing, don't, don't do it to, to try and be famous or whatever, do it because you actually like doing it. Mm. And then it doesn't feel like it's a, you know, it's, 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 it's not yeah, work. It's so. not work. It's not work. Yeah. Um, before we get into uh, long, slow XL, um, cause you mentioned about celebrities, like, are there like celebrities in these current times that, for example, because you've had a, a really great, like, long-standing career, like, are there, like, celebrities that you keep in touch with or uh, kept in touch with or or do you kind of just keep to yourself and just keep your work going? <laughs> um, you know, I kind of keep my work going. I mean, I'm um, I'm pretty good friends with um, Wendy Raquel Robinson. She's um, the star oh. of the game. I mean, so, oh, yeah. Uh, there are, there are people that I will run into. I mean, not, no one's, you know, no huge stars that I can think of. No, I, but I Wendy, actually... Wendy is, a, Wendy is a, another legend in well, itself. No, okay. Well, yes, other than Wendy, yes. Yeah, Wendy's yeah. kind of huge. Um, and, I, and it's funny because I, I seem to get to reconnect with her um, through work every few years um mm. i just did another episode of the, the 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 reboot of the game i don't know if that's over there in the uk yet is it, um, is it there? i'm not sure i have to double check but uh some u.s uh programs are not like from certain uh you know if we're talking cable or online and stuff like that we we probably would have to get like a, a um uh what's it called you know when you have to like use a program to watch like american shows if you can't yeah. watch it in your country yeah, yeah. so you know vst I, I, I can't remember what it's called but yeah, it, it, it's doable awesome. if you find the right places. Okay, well, it's called. They're doing. They did a re reboot of the game. Okay, and uh, it's on Paramount Plus here in the United States. I'm okay. not sure, there, but anyway. But uh, yeah, I seem to reconnect with her through work every every few years. It seems. Um, but no, they're just, you know, people that, that I, you know, just run into here and there. I, I saw. Uh, here's an old name, Arsenio Hall. Wow. Um, so um, he just happened to be here in in Charlotte doing he's he's doing um, the comedy circuit again. So you know, um, but they're you know it's it's nice in that you can you if you stay in the business you will continue to run into people that you've known you know from the past. That's, so that's true. That's true. Yeah. Because I mean, obviously, like you know, Malcolm and Eddie, for example. I mean, there must be times where you you know you, you bump into Malcolm or bump into Eddie at times, and you know things like that. So. I, I just feel, I, I feel like I've had the opportunity to talk to celebrities over the years, but to have like a presence to be on these shows and be consistent and still be able to catch up with all the people that you would have caught up along the way that, I mean, that must be, that must be great for your phone book as well to say like, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, oh yeah, let me call up Malcolm. Let's see how he's doing. I actually could do that, yeah. <laughs> I thought you was actually going to call Malcolm now. I'll be like, this is like a proper exclusive for the channel. Like, you know what I mean? But it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, <laughs> it's fine. Um, I mean, let's talk about Long Slow XL. Let's talk about it because it premiered a few days ago on Spectrum. Um, you know, from what I understand of it, a uh, successful head coach of a women's college basketball team uh, ends up being involved in like a sexual abuse scandal. Uh, you play like the role of uh, Gillian Porter. Um, so, I mean, talk to me about the show, talk to me about the auditioning process. And, and I guess like you said, it was a recurring role, which is something I guess that is one of your most exciting projects for you, I guess, to, to date, because you, you really, it, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of projects I've seen you do has been more on either sitcom sides or, you know, a little bit more edgier stuff, but this is like tackling serious subjects. So what got you involved and how are you interested in it? 
Yeah, I mean, it's um, it, it is exciting to get to work on a project like this, uh, you know, something that has um, not only a little more depth as an actor, but just um, importance for as uh, something for the audience to see. Um, this uh, this head coach of a women's basketball college women's basketball um, team uh, sort of gets involved in a, um, a sexual abuse scandal that could in fact ruin her career. And it's uh, the, the series is basically about how she gets through it, the, how she gets through, um, you know, tackling that and working with these young women and and um, all the politics of everything. And it's just um, the the auditioning process was, was much like, you know, any of the any of the others. Yeah, you know, audition, have, yeah. yeah. Yeah, audition, 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 and you know, you're you're. It's between you and you get put on. Uh, once they decide they like you, and then they put you on what's called a veil. So they double check to make sure that you're actually going to be available during the the um the shooting window mm-hmm. for the series. And then, but then that doesn't necessarily mean that you have the job. There could be like one or two other people that they're also considering. So right. okay, on a veil. usually when I get put on a veil, I feel like that's the kiss of death. Um, but in this case it wasn't, um, but, uh, that is, uh, that it was shot in Atlanta, Georgia. So like I said, a lot more work is being done on the East coast of the U S now. Um, and it's, it's such a, such a great cast, such a great cast. Rose Rollins is in the, is in the lead role. Um, Pam Jensen is in it. Um, I play, as you mentioned, um, Jillian Porter, my husband, is played by um his name is desmond porter his is played by um ex-football player tony gonzalez so that was fun and um i am stepmother to somebody who i think you've interviewed Brittany elena who is one of the hold, hold on hold on hold on hold on slow, slow down wait 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 rewind <laughs> rewind this whole wait hold on hold on you're saying that you seen an interview of mine where i interview Brittany elena I checked you out too. So yes, didn't did, is that not right? You, I mean, you are, you are. I'm Am just I shocked. Right? To, okay. I'm, just, I'm just shocked to the fact that you know my channel. Full stop. I, I know you, you know some form of my channel that. I oh, do. Oh, oh my gosh! Like I feel like I feel like I want to wear a suit now and just you know you know you know like how obviously you come from Superman to Clark Kent. I feel like I want to get back into a suit and gas my, Yeah, I feel want to gas myself up now. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so gassed. I I'm so I I feel honored. I, it was a really good interview too. Thank, really oh, good thank you. Thank you. I really I from someone that is long started long standing in this industry like you. It it it, uh, I, it means the world to me. Thank you so much for that. But yes, oh, yeah. I was actually going to talk about Britley and Aina because as you so as you so mentioned that you see an interview of what I did with her. Um, you know, how was it working with her as well? Because obviously she's a sports fanatic. She's done a lot of like, you know, TV appearances, you know, while and out and all that sort of stuff. I mean, she's sexy. She's goofy as well. Like when I was sitting with her, I felt like we were able to play around a lot in terms of stuff like that. So, you know, what was that relationship like that? How did you guys m- talk to me about her? That was, she is, yeah, she is such a sweetheart. Just absolutely loved her. It's so funny because, um, you know, she, I think they had done like two episodes before my first episode. So I came on and she was very, you know, very welcoming of me to the set and, you know, introduced herself and all that. And she says, you're supposed to play my, my stepmom. Okay guys. Yeah. This is my, this is my stepmom. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I would I would have thought more sisters because I don't think I don't think stepmother should really be as part of that. I think you should be more sisters because I mean okay. I mean whatever. <laughs> I mean that, like you that. like you said you got to work in it. Got to work it, yeah. But yeah, but yeah. she was, yeah, really really great to work with. And she's like, oh, have you ever been on? Now here's where I felt old with her though, because she's like, oh. have you ever been on? Have you ever um, done a series before? And I said. Yeah, <laughs> a few. So. You're trying to but downplay this, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this was yeah, but it was her first, and right. you know she was so excited and everything, as, as she should be. Uh, what I loved about that series is there were a lot of newcomers, a lot of newcomers. Um, all the young ladies who were playing um the basketball team, and I love the fact that they all were actually, you know, they actually all played basketball, and which mm. I didn't know that was going to be the case. Mm. Um, when I started, so I was like, wow, respect. Okay. <laughs> you know, so that was, I mean, and they were, they, they really did it. They, they, you know, had practices, they had, you know, day games, uh, days where they only, um, 
were on the court and it, it was you know it was pretty intense for them especially so. I, bet, I bet for Brittany it was just like another day in the office because she does this probably yeah, yeah probably, probably. So. <laughs> because it, it's interesting you just said that Brittany coming in her first role and you know she felt very excited and obviously you being like the mentor in this situation because you've gone through it yourself like did you feel the same way with Brittany when you first came into the the scene and did your first set did you have that same excitement that she had coming in with you um yeah I mean you know it's it's I think it's always exciting um although you know I you don't I didn't have I no longer have quite the nerves you know before you know when I first started acting you're like oh please don't you know let me jump with the line with the line with the line with you know it's you've got all that all the, the nervous jitters going on but um yeah. now it's more like okay cool let's see that's only okay yeah i got that line okay i'm good yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 more I, I won't say it's 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 never boring for me mm. um but it's more um it's like you know like with you when you first did your your first interview mm -hmm. you were probably a lot more nervous when you first did your in your first interview oh boy than, was i ever you know so it's just something you know you just sort of fall into a groove and you know true that's true that's yeah. true and i believe that um i mean obviously for you like you know you, you've appeared like on an episode for in days of our lives beyond Selim on peacock um <laughs> you've got a dog named bella if i'm correct <laughs> Ew, you did your homework. Yes, I did. Yeah, my sweetheart, my little baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, my I, child. I mean, I, I, I have my child right here. I'll show you real quick. Oh, she was sleeping, but. Oh, so, oh, so cute. Oh yeah, my yeah. goodness. Yeah, Bella's downstairs sleeping. My Bella's fifteen. Oh so wow. So Bella's sleeping. Yeah, she sleeps a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just interrupted her sleep just to do that. She'll probably bark at me <laughs> later. She is a little shit sometimes, but don't let this face fool you. you know? <laughs> She has her ways about so her. But... Oh my goodness. Yes. All right. Well, see, I'm loving you more, more and more now. So you're a dog <laughs> I am definitely a dog person. I grew up with dogs all my life. I had uh, two Staffordshire Bull Terriers. I had a Doberman, obviously a West, West Yorkshire Terrier. That This dog was actually my nan's before she passed away. And we decided we were going to take care of her in my nan's honor. So, uh, so yeah, that was the case for that. But, um, you're also you're also like a founder of the company uh, sister, sister at creative um i mean so you know what what's going on with you currently besides all the you know all the glitz and glam and also the audition stuff like you know talk to us about what other stuff that you got going on for you well i mean pretty much everything i do is somehow connected to the entertainment industry um sure. sister at creative and we talk for you are both um uh, well sister at creative is a um it's sort of an actors co-op and the, the idea is to connect actors, young actors and, and sort of be mentors for them, um, give an opportunity to sort of, when you act, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like playing a sport. You know, you can't just like get out on the court and just play without practicing or mm. you can, but it's not going to be, you're not going to be great at it. So, you know, yeah. it's important as an actor to sort of stretch your muscles mm. on a regular basis, get together with other actors, both you know, do scenes, do that kind of thing. So that's what sister at creative of, is about. Um, and uh, we talked for you. I, I also, I think I'm, since I said I was, uh, I have a background in, in television production. Okay. Um, I like shooting things. So I shoot headshots. I also do um, uh, a lot, a lot of um, uh, smaller productions for corporate entities, um, you know, that sort of thing. So that's what, that's what I do. So I'm on both sides of the camera at this point. So. Wow. So, I mean, obviously yeah. you've had a longevity, so now you're going behind the camera as well. So you're just, you're just a jack of all trades at this point. You, you, next thing you know, you're going to be on the, you're going to be on the moon, you're going to be on the moon next. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why not? I mean, yeah. I mean, Elon, yeah. Elon Musk is doing it. Like Jeff Bezos is doing it. Why, why can't not? you? Yeah. Why can't, why can't yeah. you? You know, why can't any of us? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, let's let's manifest that. Do you know what I mean? Why not? Exactly. Um, so take me through a day of Enya Flack when away from all of this. So say like, obviously, like, you know, you're just chilling. You have your day off. Like, you know, what's a, what's a day in the life of Enya Flack on a normal well, gosh, that's so, uh, wow, that's so rare that I'm not somehow working, but, um, if I had, but okay, so, so let's go with Sundays. Cause I, I, I make myself not work on Sundays. I do go to church on Sundays when I can, I'm playing, you know, I'm spending the day with my dog, um, you know, with my guy, um, you know, just, I, I love nature. 
Um, so I, like I said, I bought this house. I'm always trying to make something grow. I'm not very good at it. My mom, that's my mom with the green thumb, but I, I'm not so good with that. Um, I love going for, um, for hikes. It's beautiful in North Carolina. It's very green. Mm. Um, I love the mountains. So I may ch- you know, drive an hour and a half West, um, to the mountains here and just, you know, take in nature. I'm, I'm, I'm a nature girl. So okay. I'm, I, I'm in, I'm usually in jeans, baseball cap, sweatshirt. That's usually me. Um, you know what's funny yeah. you know what's funny it's like you know with a lot of celebrities that are trying to be low-key like you know, they're always wearing like a curved bar- baseball cap jeans and maybe maybe like a coat or a hoodie just to kind of hide their identity but you're just doing it on a regular <laughs> anyway i guess so you know oh, yeah i guess you don't give a really I, don't, I guess you don't really give a shit about that it's just like literally like if people recognize me fine but like you know i'm just doing me i don't give a shit you know, I like, yeah, I, I imagine like if you were somebody like, I don't know, like uh, if you were Will Smith or somebody like that, that's, you know, highly recognizable. Yeah, I can see if you're trying to hide. But I've got one of those faces where people are like. Where have I seen her like, before? I don't know. Wait, don't I know you? Yeah. And it's like, I have one of those faces. No, no, no. Wait. Wait, aren't you? Wait, aren't you on TV? So I have. That's the way. That's that's what I get more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's do you, you kind of like it that way? I kind of do. Yeah. I do. I mean, I like, I love, I love what I do, but I don't know that I would ever really love um, feeling like I couldn't go right. wherever I wanted to go and be, and be, you know, sort of in peace. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just a few more questions before I let you go. Cause I've really, really enjoyed this conversation. Like you, you are just the best. Like, honestly, you are just the best. Like, honestly, I couldn't have had a better guest on um, than you. So thank you so much for your time. But I wanted to uh, I wanted to ask you, what what's the best advice that you've ever received in your career and who was it from? <sighs> Let me think about that. I was, okay. Um, yeah, this I didn't understand it at the time, but I, I do now. Um, someone once said to me, um, you can live in LA, but don't become of LA and what he Mm. meant. And he really meant you can be in the business, but don't become infatuated by the business. Don't, don't let it be be in it, but don't let it overtake you. Wow. That's what he meant. And, um, that was given to me by, um, Benny Medina, who, um, was a executive producer of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Wow. How ironic how ironic then. It's like your first your first entry into major show like Fresh Prince and then the best advice was from that. Mm -hmm. How great is that? That's I mean, so much has come from that. It's so crazy. I mean, have you ever been I mean, obviously you've been starstruck, you mentioned about it before, but like who's been who's been the person you've been the most starstruck? Because again, you've had a long standing career. You know, it's funny because because I, I have a it's you won't you, you may not even know who I'm talking about if I tell you. Um, and it's it's interesting because I've worked with some some big 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 names, um, Angelina Jolie and and Will Smith and 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 Denzel Washington. I've I've worked with some big names, met some big people, but the person I was most starstruck over was somebody that um, I grew up watching myself. Wow. And okay, so do you, do you guys get the Andy Griffith show over there? What what show? It's called the Andy Griffith show. I've heard it's of it. I've heard of it. Show. It was an old show when I was watching it as a kid. Yeah, when I'm I mean, familiar. So it's it's based in North Carolina. The show is based in North Carolina. They, it's in Mayberry, North Carolina, and yeah. uh, there is a, a guy named uh, a, a character named Barney Fife on there, and it was I've played heard, by I've heard this. So I've heard this by, yeah. Don, by Don Knotts. And I, um, I was working at Warner Brothers at the time, and I was work. I was a secretary to a producer. Mm. I you know, in L.A. And I was working, and I was my job was to uh, was to take care of everybody's contracts, all the guest actors. And there's this little knock a knock at my door, and the guy comes and he comes in, and I look up, and I literally started shaking. It was Don Knotts, and I just started shaking. I got this big stupid grin. I was like, Oh my god, you're funny! I, I mean, it was it was ridiculous, and I and I, and everybody was, Oh my god, you are a nerd! But it's because. I grew up watching him and I guess it was just so, it's like when you're a kid and you think that's a, you know, 
So that was it. Wow. But, and, you know, I, I've met Robert De Niro and all kinds of people, but. Yeah, me, I'm Bar- just casually saying it. You know, it Robert De Niro, Barney. Will Smith, Den- Denzel <laughs> Washington, Barney Fife, you know, just casual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Barney's up there. I mean, when you said Andy Griffith, the only reference I, I remember, there was a stand-up from uh, Mar- Martin Lawrence, uh, You So Crazy. And he, he mm-hmm. mentioned uh, um, there was a segment where he was talking about uh, the men knowing themselves. And obviously, like, you know, he was, you know, pretending to have a, like, have a wank or whatever. And then, like, but the whole segment was about, oh, that's my guy, Andy Griffith. And I thought, like, yeah, I heard that <laughs> reference before. So I knew it came from somewhere. That's funny. Yeah, that's, that's funny. That... I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, I wouldn't have expected it, but you know, yeah. stuff happens. <laughs> so it, hey, shit happens. It does, of course. Um, so, last thing I wanted to ask you, just a little quick game. Um, mm-hmm. Have you have you ever heard of this game, Snog, Marry, or Avoid? Uh, no. Right. Okay. okay. Oh, I've got a lot of teaching for you on this one then. So okay. basically, uh, we play we play this game. It's something that we do in Britain quite a fair amount. So. Um, so basically I'm going to give you three names and you have to either, you have to choose to either snog them, which is kiss them, okay. marry, marry them or to avoid them. So, okay. so, so literally it's just, I'm going to give you three names. So you got to give me, you got to tell me if you were snog, marry or avoid these people. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And I, and I've chosen names that have been synonymous in your career. So, right. So, okay. so. Snog, marry, or avoid. So, number one, Malcolm mm-hmm. jo- Malcolm Jamal jo- 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 Warner, Will Smith. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, Malcolm jo- Jamal Warner, Will Smith, mm-hmm. and LL Cool J. Snog, marry, or avoid. All three, or, or no, no, no. All, so you have I, to you have to pick one. You have to pick one. one for each. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's the game. Oh wow. Okay. Um. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's say snog for for Malcolm. Ooh. Okay. Uh. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> this catches everyone off guard. I love this. Um. Avoid. Avoid will. Okay. Mary um, LL. Ooh. Would you like to know why, though? I, talk to me. See, talk to me. Talk to me. That's not fair for those. <laughs> okay. I'm an asshole. I have to be. <laughs> snog, snog, be. Mouth and snog because, you know, um, we, the last time I saw him, which was on The Resident a, a couple of years ago, mm. we, uh, we had a really nice talk. We had a really good talk. We actually worked out some stuff that was a little weird. Um, on the set of Malcolm and Eddie. And so now I just have this, I, I, I didn't dislike him before, but it was, you know, a little, there was a little strangeness. So, um, so yeah, I have a real, I have a real love from him in my heart right now. So that's wow. what's Malcolm. Okay. Uh, avoid Bill only because of what he's going through right now. I don't need to be a part of that. I'm just like, I'll stay away from that. Okay. Only reason. Because otherwise, I think he's great. Um, and uh, Mary LL, because if I'm not mistaken, he's been with the same lady for many years. I think, which says I think, he's I think 20 husband. plus years. Yeah, which says he's a good husband. And he's, so a, and, and, and he's a Capricorn as well. Okay. Did you not you know go. this? I didn't know that. Because ah, <laughs> I think his birthday is on the 18th of January. Oh my god! So it's six okay. days after you. So no wonder why you would say you would marry him because he's been faithful That's... to his woman the whole twenty years. <laughs> Team Capricorn, Capricorn gang all day long. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. I mean, and on that though, on that note, what a way to end off. I mean, Enya, I have to absolutely thank you for your time. This has been the best, honestly. Like. I was so excited to chat to you this week. I was happy that you said you'd be willing to chat to me. And, you know, this will go on as like one of the most infamous interviews I feel, especially like there's nothing on YouTube. So this is it. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really, truly appreciate it. Oh, thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. A, a pleasure is mine. I mean, if you can tell our audience, 
where they can catch you on all the socials, what's coming up for you, what you want to promote. The floor is yours, sweetheart. Take it away. Yeah. Okay. So please help me, help me boost up my Instagram. First of all, it's Enya Flack, just, just like it's spelled, my, it's spelled E-N-Y-A-F-L-A-C-K. Enya Flack on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Okay. And um, yeah, I just want to plug um, Long So Exhale. That's, that premiered um, on, what, two days ago. Mm-hmm. Check out this series. It's, it's an amazing series. I've also got a film that I'm working on that's going to be coming up on Lifetime. Probably, it's probably going to be a couple months, but it's called um, Suitcase Killer. Ooh. That's a good one. That's a really good one. So yeah, check that one out too. Well, I would safely say then, let me know. Let me not go in your suitcase if I want to come over to North Carolina, because I think it would be safe then. I'll just bring my own suitcase or a bag. At there least. You go. Yeah, because I don't want to be killed out there. Like, I'd rather just be in one piece. Nobody wants that. No, <laughs> no, 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 nobody wants that. But I, I want to thank you for being so open in this chat today about your career. I mean a lot of people if they don't know you from your career they certainly will do now and i i am so honored that i got to chat to i'm I'm gonna say it you are a legend i will say you are i will say happily you are a legend you've long standed in this career and you know i wish you all the best in your career and to keep going forward and to keep work keep work going keep work going that's it thank you so much i really have had a great time talking to you Joel. well pleasure's mine and yeah uh well enjoy the rest of your day and keep that work going and i hope to speak to you soon okay you take all it. right take it easy sweet